What is up guys? Back at you again with another review today. I know that most of you guys, when you think PCP air rifle, you think between mm, potentially three and six hundred dollars as far as an entry level gun. Today we're going to be taking a look at the bottom of the barrel as far as price point is concerned on PCP air rifle. Now, obviously that 1200 feet per second number is probably going to be achieved with a PBA non-lead style ammunition, but having said that, I expect to see at least 1050 feet per second as far as lead pellets are concerned out of this rifle. Won't keep you guys waiting any longer, won't keep you guys in the dark a second more. We are going to be looking at the Deanna Storm Rider in 177 caliber, the Gen 2 model. Now this model is a little bit longer because because of the added moderator that uh, Deanna chose to put on this rifle to try and quiet it up a little bit from the initial release. Why do I consider this to be the least expensive rifle? Pyramider sells us Gen 2 177 Storm Rider for 199 bucks. That in and of itself, pretty screaming deal, at least on paper. I uh, couldn't find anything in the reviews that, that seemed to speak negatively of it. For, so for 199 bucks, actually a really good deal to be able to get you into the PCP game. Having said that, you can Google pretty much any day of the year and find a 10% off coupon somewhere online that's going to give you 10% off on Pyramid Air. What's that mean to us in this case? That means $19.97 is going to come off of a $197 gun, which at that point makes it the least expensive 1000 plus foot per second PCP rifle that's a repeater. Now I know you guys are going to say, oh the Beeman QB Chief is a little bit less expensive. Yeah, but you only get a single shot out of that gun. So you know, I don't really consider it to be in the same category as a repeating bolt action PCP like the Deanna Storm Rider is. Now I've never had a Gen 1 so I don't really have anything to compare it to. We're going to go ahead and take a close look, unbox and review in full the Deanna Storm Rider Gen 2 177 PCP air rifle. All right, guys, well, there's a lot to cover today, so let's get it. All right, guys, you can see in front of you, you got the Deanna Storm Rider. This is the 177 Generation 2 model. Um, basically, all they did to this model was they added a, uh, a little bit more of a moderator on the end of this, so they kind of quieted it up. I don't know that they've done any valve work. I don't know that they got any more shots per fill, anything like that. I think the main focal point of what their revision was was to try and quiet the rifle up. Let's go ahead and open it up, guys. I always like how Deanna puts the foam inserts in their boxes. Whether it's the Deanna Chaser that I got that had the soft case or this gun apparently, they all seem to have this little foam piece inside the box. And it's, it's just an added nicety, you know, that keeps things safe until the end user receives it. Got some instructions here. See they uh, come translated in a bunch of languages there. Now honestly guys, the one thing that I notice right away having just opened the box this rifle in size appears to be roughly the same size as my Red Rider BB gun. The Red Rider BB gun in my mind spatially is the same size as this. So I feel like I'm gonna feel the same way I do when I shoulder my Red Rider BB gun in the sense that in the sense that I might be shouldering a younger shooter's gun. It's like you got a uh, single shot tray, got a bunch of different O-rings here, you got a fill probe done right. Now what I mean by fill probe done right, on the hat sign you have threads on the back of a fill probe with no quick disconnect fitting. That really is a pain in the ass when you want to go and fill your rifle for the first time and realize that you have to contact Pyramid Air for the Air Venturi fitting. That's garbage. I feel like Deanna has it right on the head as far as a design is concerned to incorporate the foster fitting into their fill probe. Oh, that is wedged in there, boy. The standard Storm Rider magazine here, it holds nine rounds in 177 and seven rounds in 22 caliber. These are the same magazines that you would use if you had a chaser in either caliber. All right, guys, onto the part we all came to see. Let's get this baby out of the box.
All right, guys. Right away, my first impressions of this little gun, it immediately feels old. Having had this out of the box for no more than one minute, I definitely say that the most notable feeling I get from this is the fact that it feels vintage, even though it's brand new. Like, we all heard that story before, right? Grandma sitting on the front porch, rocking in the rocking chair, and every time she rocks the chair, she hits the can. This feels like the rifle that Grandma would be planking the can with in the rocking chair. This is a cool little gun to me. When I shoulder this rifle up, it immediately says to me, I'm probably gonna get everything out of this rifle that I didn't get from my Red Rider. I'm actually kind of interested to get this over the crony and see if this actually delivers on the advertised velocities. This feels like a very small rifle, like it's a child's gun. So the idea of having a Magnum air gun type power in a child's gun type package seems kind of like counterintuitive. So it'll be interesting to see what this gun actually does over the crony numbers wise. I know that handling this, this feels the same as any Ruger 10-22 I've ever held in my life. This feels like that small package, plinking style, farm gun type of a feel that you would get off of a small 22 caliber rimfire type footprint. Now being as this is 177 caliber and not 22 caliber, I'm opting to try and extract the maximum accuracy for punching paper out of this gun, not so much the hunting factor as far as foot pounds of energy is concerned. If I wanted to get the foot pounds of energy out of it, I probably would have gone with the 22 caliber. Also, I have no air guns whatsoever, except for this one reportedly, that will send a pellet that's led over a thousand feet per second for testing purposes. So for me, not only did I want to get this as far as a fun gun is concerned, but also for you guys so that I can go ahead and test out some more 177 pellets that I haven't been really showcasing. Definitely got to mention guys, the checkering on the forearm and on the stock of this gun is absolutely amazing like it's got this interesting tactile feel that has a texture but it's still smooth whatever uh, process that they use to get their checkering on these stocks definitely feels quality not feeling like a $179 PCP definitely a cool package all right guys let's go ahead and get this out to the range let's go ahead and see what it does over the crony see what we can do accuracy grouping wise and see if there's any pellets in particular this gun does or does not like all right guys let's get it All right, guys, we're gonna start things off with the good old-fashioned Red Fire by Gamo. It's probably one of the most popular 177 rounds out there, so we're gonna go ahead and see if right out of the box the Storm Rider likes it. All right, guys, well, the Red Fire has fared really well as far as the first group with a dirty barrel with open sights. Um, let's see how the uh, Gamo PBA, the Gamo Air Star, does over the crony. It's actually the lightest PBA produced by Gamo, so if we're gonna see some 1200 plus velocity, this is the ammo we'll see. All right, guys, so wildly inaccurate. We were using that center target as our point of aim but uh, definitely 1200 plus feet per second at least one time so we know the rifle's capable of it. Now this isn't really a test to show anything other than the maximum velocity achievable with this rifle. It's not intended to be like, oh, this is the ammunition that you should be using or that you would be using normally in the field. All right guys, let's move to the more traditional Gamo rocket, which is also a very heavy pellet in comparison to the Gamo Air Star. All right guys, let's go back to the modern Gamo PBA stuff and check out the Gamo Lethal. All and finally guys, to go ahead and round out our five pellet set, we're gonna go back to the most classic pellet of all time, the Crossman Match, also known as the Crossman Premier Wad Cutter.
All right guys, since we have just under half the capacity of air left in our 100cc cylinder on the Storm Rider, let's go ahead and see if we can make an actual group out of that center target that we failed so horribly with the Air Stars on. We're gonna go ahead and test another Gamo PBA. We're gonna go ahead and test the Gamo Armor this time. Kind of an expensive pellet, but we're gonna see what it does in a five shot group. All right guys, Maccabee Speed parting shots on the Deanna Storm Rider in 177 caliber Gen 2. This thing is outstanding. For the price point paid versus the performance garnered, I am going to have a very difficult time beating this in any caliber as far as a PCP gun is concerned. No matter what caliber or power level you're looking at, typically you're in the 200 plus dollar range to get into anything near this, especially if it's a repeater. A good example is the Beeman QB Chief. It's a single shot, bolt action rifle that shoots at a slower velocity than this and actually costs just a buck or two more after the coupon is applied to the Storm Rider. Even though it's very diminutive in size, it's actually kind of a mini powerhouse to be honest. I really liked to see 1,000 plus foot per second with lead pellets, especially some of the heavier stuff like the Rocket. The trend on the Chrony today was this gun for sure likes heavy pellets. We saw a huge jump in foot-pounds of energy when we went to a heavier pellet versus the lighter PBA that we had been shooting. Now I know I've referenced this as being a diminutive, kind of a smaller shooter, smaller frame style gun, but let's go ahead and shoulder it, and, and then I'll shoulder the quintessential adult PCP, which is the Benjamin Marauder. You can see when I shoulder up with the Marauder, it's much larger spatially in my hands than the Deanna is. But where the Deanna lacks size, it definitely doesn't lack power. Anything that'll get a pellet over 1200 feet per second, no matter the weight, gotta be considered a Magnum powered air gun, guys. The fact that it's a repeater, and the fact that I got almost 30 shots at nominal velocities on a single fill, bode incredibly well for this Deanna rifle. I don't care that it's made in China whatsoever. With the functionality being what it is, and the price point being what it is, this is a solid contender for the best buy of PCP air rifle on the market today. All right guys, well honestly, if you don't have a PCP rifle yet and you're still watching my video, then I haven't done my job correctly because this is worth clicking off my video, going to Pyramid Air and picking one up. I'm not sponsored by them whatsoever. This was not a donated rifle by them. I paid full price for this beast minus my coupon. This is enough of a performance powerhouse to where I feel like they deserve a shout out for sure. Do yourself a favor and take it to the extra step that I actually didn't on this order, which is getting that 10 for 10. 10 bucks, they're gonna fill the rifle, they're gonna go ahead and shoot a 10 shot string, and they're gonna tell you what ammo they use to shoot that string with so you get an idea of how it performs before it even comes out of the box. All right, guys, well, if you've liked this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button with the bell notification button so you can stay current on what we got going on on the channel. If you really like this video, go ahead and share it so that somebody else can see it. Until next time, guys, shoot safe, and I'll see you in the next one.